Hi, welcome to TouchMix Training. In this series of short videos, we'll be going over the basic function of the TouchMix Compact Digital Mixer. Now in this first installment, we'll be going over the basic function and navigation of the mixer. The TouchMix series has two models, the TouchMix 8 and the TouchMix 16, which I have in front of me. At the top of your main surface are your inputs. The TouchMix 16 has 12 XLR inputs and four more that are a combination XLR or quarter inch jack. You'll find an analog trim knob for each input just beneath it. There are two more stereo inputs and a pair of stereo aux outputs. These outputs could drive an amplifier, a powered loudspeaker, or a wired in-ear monitor. You also have one output each for your Q-Send and a monitor signal. Moving to the back, you can see that it has six aux sends. Combined with the two stereo auxes, that's a total of eight monitor mixes. Next to the auxes on the back, you'll see the two main outputs and a dedicated talkback input so you don't have to waste a channel for the board operator. On both models, you'll also find the power supply connector, an accessory jack, and two USB ports for media recording, playback, and a Wi-Fi dongle for a wireless connection on the rear panel. TouchMix 8 has eight inputs instead of 16 and four total auxiliary sends. Aux sends 3 and 4 also feed a stereo quarter-inch output capable of driving wired in-ear monitors. Like the TouchMix 16, there are two additional stereo inputs. And other than that, these two models are the same. Same incredible power and function. The focal point of the TouchMix is the color touchscreen. You can manipulate any mixer control just by selecting it and dragging your finger on the screen or by using the convenient master wheel. If you press the wheel down, it will give you finer control over whatever it is you're adjusting. The combination of using one hand on the screen and one hand on the wheel lets you navigate quickly and make precise adjustments at the same time. This main screen shows an overview of all the fader banks at the top of the screen. Selecting one of those brings up that bank. To adjust the settings on the channel, simply tap its name and you'll have access to its EQ, compression, gate, effects, monitor mixes, and more. You can return to your fader at any time by pressing the home button, and there are also shortcuts to the menu screen and the recording playback function here. On the surface of the mixer, you'll find buttons that access the FX wizard or gain wizard, your aux master control, FX mute, mute groups, and an info button that accesses the onboard user guide. The phantom power button takes you to this screen where you can manually toggle phantom power for each one of your inputs individually. And of course, the standby button will power down your mixer. Cycling the power back on takes the touch mix out of standby and back to its last known state, right as you left it. Finally, there's a button to activate the talkback mic, buttons that access the levels of your headphones and monitor, and a series of user shortcut and navigation buttons. And that's it. In the next installment, we'll take a look at the difference between advanced mode and simple mode, and how you can choose which one you want to use. So, we'll see you then.